Are we doing it? Is it going? Do we got the green light? Come on, YouTube. Tell me. Tell me the good news. Show me the money. All right, it looks like it's doing it. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Here we go. Uh, going to do some experimental stuff. Trying to do some live learning here at 1030 at night. Uh, yeah, sweet. What's up, Andrew? How's it going? Thanks for coming to hang out. Let's try and get uh, let's try and get the party people coming in here. Master Bob, Vibev, welcome guys. Thanks for coming to hang out. I got a link that I can share in the Discord server. Just trying to get the, trying to say hello. Doo -doo -doo. I promise I am I am doing things, although it doesn't look like there's anything on the screen. Let's start the party. Just notifying the Discord server. All right, sweet. Where's everybody at? Hello, hello. <laughs> Terrence, welcome. Yiggles, how you doing, man? Go is fun, except for error handling. All right, well, let's learn about it. Here we go. I have Go installed. Go. Um, let's make directory. Learn Go. Let's see. Learn Go. Let's see what we got here. But whenever I try and like do stuff, it tells me that my environment variables are wrong. Tell us why Go. What's it better at? Uh, Go is very, very, very cross-platform from what I understand. Like it'll run on Windows, Linux, and that's all you should really care about in all honesty. Sinister. Hello. Welcome, man. What's going on? No, <laughs> no pixel. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to see me fail as usual. That's why we do it. Welcome to a tour of the Go programming language. Sweet. Tours interactive. Click the run button. Go to. Is it what? Is there a go to? Is that a thing? Please subscribe. Run. All right, <laughs> got my Hello World program going. Sweet, let's check this out. Click the right arrow or type or hit the page down key. Dude, I'm all about the page down. All right, it's available in many different languages. I happen to speak all of these languages at the exact same time. Okay, standalone program. Oh, oh, that's sweet. To run the tour locally, install the tour binary. Go get that. Can I do it? How do I do it? Should I bring the Kool-Aid man? Absolutely. <laughs> Sinister, I might I might go for you. We might party together. See if I run go get, will it do it? Unrecognized import path context. Do I need HTTP in there or anything? You go experts. Immediately, I need your help. <laughs> Without a doubt. All right, cool. I need to set a go path. Right, so I have done that before, and that's the thing. Um, let's see if I can get in that directory. Dot go. There's stuff in here. However, I get that error with uh, the context, and I don't know why. I've seen some other stuff too. It's like you need to set your environment variables, blah blah blah. So, man, 10:30 at night is not the best time to stream. I'm learning. I'm finding that out. So, uh, for those of you that have been hanging out with me, I just got back from Tool or the Open uh, Lock Picking Organization, and it was the first time I'd ever been to one of their meetings. So it was super cool. Uh, learned a lot about your Go path cannot be where you installed Go. Is that where I installed Go? Probably, considering there's bin and source in there. Where do I put my Go path? Can I put an opt? Because everything should go in opt. I'm a firm believer. I'm an opt evangelist. Has to be a separate directory. I think I have some of the stuff like in my ignition key script. Ignition key. I think I have stuff for Go. Adding go path and go bin to bash RC so future installs are easy. So I install it. 
and I add export go path to go to home go and bash, and that's where also where I set go bin. So those things have to be completely different stuff. Is that right? Let's just use the internet. Let's just use the webs, the interwebs. So yeah, uh, tools though. The uh, I hung out with one of my friends, one of my boys, uh, a good a good fellow watcher on the Discord server. Um, so if you are in the area, if you're around Northern Virginia in, in the DC area, dude, hit me up because I want to meet you. I want to hang out with you. We can do some cool stuff. Kazim, welcome, man. Is that how is that how you pronounce your name, Kazim? Kazim. <laughs> uh, so they had a competition at the tool at uh, the open source at the open organization for lock picking. Um, and I've seen it at B sides DC. I've seen it at uh, Shmoocon, and I hung out and played there for a little bit, but. At Shmoocon, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the uh, basic level four and basic level five and level six, so I'm not good. Like I suck. <laughs> uh, but while I was there tonight, I got basic level five and basic level six, and then they had this uh, master uh, lock, just a regular master lock that had four pins, um, and they were going to have a little competition. So whoever wanted to play could have this individual like time you for however long it took you to actually like you know pick that lock, and. I said like, "Yo, has anyone uh, has any has anyone asked you like to compete yet? Can I? Has anyone started yet?" I said like, "No, man. You want to do it?" It's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be the first. I'm gonna jump in." So I was picking with the master lock for a little bit, and I got it. And when I, the first time I did it for time, it was like 18 seconds, which isn't good. <laughs> um, and I said like, "How can I? How long can I have you here for? Can I go again?" And he's like, "Yeah, absolutely. Whatever you want." And it's like, "Sweet. I'm gonna keep you here until someone else calls you away." <laughs> So the second time I timed it, I got it in like instantly, like immediately. It was two seconds, and then I was like, "Oh God, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta beat that record." So we tried it again. It was like three and a half. So uh, immediately, <laughs> I, I won the competition, uh, and I got this little challenge coin here. So n fun stuff. Hey, Mr. Ashton, you're the man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. I promise we're gonna learn to go. This isn't going to diverge to an install Arch Linux <laughs> stream. All right, this tour is built atop the Go Playground, a web service that runs on Golang servers. Servers runs a Go program, compiles links, and runs the program inside the sandbox. Slick. Do we have inside? Yeah, see, Sinister. <laughs> you already know. You already know that I'm, I'm lost without you. So Go Playground is just a service that runs it. Yeah, you want to jump in, man? Let's keep, let's keep entertained. Let's give the people what they want. I don't know if I have your audio rolling or not, but let's find out. Sinister Matrix coming from the voice call. That's What's sick. up? Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, we're good, right? Can the world hear you? Yeah, it looks like it's got some audio there. Sweet. <laughs> so I have Go installed, and I have those weird um, errors. Yeah. Like I was saying, you can't... Where you install Go, you have to put a separate directory in order to yeah. um, compile the programs that you need, that you're going to create. So my Go bin and my Go path are the exact same thing. Um, can I just, well, not the exact same thing because bin is in the bin directory. Um, mm -hmm. can I just set go path to something else? Yes. Set go path probably to a different folder directory. Just literally yeah. anything? Like it doesn't matter where? Yeah, you can create, you can create it anywhere. Just make sure to add it. You need to export it as a part of your go path. <clears throat> so as a separate environmental variable on your system. So... I'm going to create a little go path and I'll put it in opt go path. I should have kept that so I can run it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit easier on Linux Windows. It's a little bit more difficult. Oh, I don't doubt it, man. I'm oh. trying to actually get it running on Windows right now. Someone is asking you to mute your YouTube. Might have, there's feedback from me talking. Is it? I've muted it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to give the people what they want. <laughs> Chad Whitman. 
it might be my server that you're getting feedback from. Try Either that or a fan in my room. Hold up. Hold up. I, um, originally, when I got home, was still in my work clothes, my, my business casual biz cash clothes, uh, but then I made some pasta. I was kind of hungry. I saw that. Was it enough? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't end up using those. We only had, like, four pieces of rigatoni left, so I just went for, just, like, spaghetti. Regular <laughs> notch. <laughs> regular, <laughs> regular pasta. Yeah, kind of the, the boring stuff. So say I have set my go path, and then I go get, and I get package context, unrecognized import path context. Ooh, everyone is hyped up with the Temple OS install. I should do that too. So much to uh, do. I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the last time we jumped from learning a language to installing our... Yeah, yeah, we completely fail. Let, let's not do that with Temple OS. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This guy puts random folders and directories. Maybe that. Maybe they all have to be separate. I'm going to try that. John, can you share your screen so that way I can... Uh, yes. It's hard to do it when I'm like behind of whatever, what you're I can't, seeing. I can't specify what screen that I share on That's Linux. Fine. So you just have all this stuff. Have both. <laughs> go root is go root should be where I installed it, right? Uh, go root directory. Go find it. Yeah, because the the whole install for Windows is so different from Linux. That... Yeah, I don't doubt it. You know how long it took me to get Go working the first time I did it. Yeah, I just set, I saw Master Bob, I just set go root to user local go, which obviously doesn't exist. So I want to make sure if uh, if go root is supposed to be like where I installed it, which would be just the local one. So I can export go root to equal home, we'll use that, and then go. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I can't find the flag! <laughs> There is no flag. <laughs> Phantasm, hello. Welcome. We're failing at learning Go, as usual. We're here for entertainment. <laughs> Don't we always start out with failing? Yeah, failure? man. That's why I was like, I'll just use the web interface. It'll be fine and easy, which, I mean, I could absolutely do. But it's better if I do it from the command line. Yeah, the web interface is good for basic stuff. But if you want to actually create and compile stuff it's easier to do it I'd like to I don't know why I'm getting package bytes fail do I need to specify pkg in that live code welcome hello what the crap this is just terminal parrot maybe go was never actually installed What is Go used for? Go is a programming language, so you can do really whatever you want with it. Thanks, Google Chrome. You're in the way. <laughs> I don't like it. You're spazzing out over there. Yeah, man. That's the best way to go on the internet, is to show people, oh god, it's like tearing the screen. I dig it. How not, yeah. <laughs> How not to do things. <laughs> We should have a like a warning before we start doing any of these videos. <laughs> Please do not try this at home. <laughs> Was going even installed? Going go. It's already set. Is going a separate thing? It's weird. Go is used to go to hell. I dig that Kool Aid man. <laughs> <laughs> No, but Go is pretty cool to work with. Just some of the syntax you're going to find out real soon is really cool. Like, I don't doubt I dig, it. I dig some of it. Not going to lie. <laughs> you know, we were originally writing that bot in Go because I, I yeah. just gave in to KFBI. He was like, 
we have to use Go. I was like, uh. I was like, I don't know about that. I don't know Go very well. But like once he got me in, he really should be the one on here because like I know he was saying like, dude, I would love to walk you through it and we we can hang out. Um, I think it's too late at night for him though. though. Our time zones all messed up. Yeah, it is. Let's see. So while you're installing Go, I'm going to be installing Go as well. Go's installed. Just a... Workspace directory. Set the Go path environment variable. Setting Go path. Let's just use one that we've got here. CD Go. Dot bash RC. Let's see this behavior. Oh, I put that in bash RC. That should still do the same thing, right? Yeah. Z shell is fine. Is that like all I need to do? Is go path literally all it needs? Yeah, just make sure that your go root and your go path are two two separate places. And that you have to change the environmental variables to make sure that your go path is not where you installed go. Because if it is, it will give you a bunch of compiling errors. <laughs> Kyle or pseudo app get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, Not it, yet. it'll, it'll come soon. There. Go build. What the garbage? Cannot find package format in anything. Maybe my install of Go is crap. Flubbed up. It probably is. Kool Aid Man, thanks for hanging out. Get some rest, my friend. Let's see if this is gonna play nice. User local go. It's just not a straight up not a thing. It's not a thing. User local go doesn't exist. Oh sweet. Okay, I got mine working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're up to speed. First step. Install. <laughs> it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually I would consider it being easier in Windows than uh Linux. Linux can be a pain sometimes. Let's try and go from source and see what this does. It's taking its sweet time to download. Got it. Dominic Strong, hello, welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out, dude. Tar XVZ go. That does it. Should I have done that in the home directory? I think I should have. <laughs> Break everything. <laughs> How have you been? You've got uh, still recovering for a little bit, hanging out. Sinister. Oh, yeah. I'm still. Yeah, I just have a few more days left, but it's. It's it's been it's been rough. <laughs> Sorry to hear. Nah, it's, it's all cool. It'll. It'll, it's gonna it's gonna last me a while anyways you know rehurting an old injury is not not fun I don't doubt it Let's see. gone and broke yourself though Kyle yeah man you absolutely should be Doing homework and stuff. That's that's really what's important in life. I know. <laughs> yes. Homework no. beats the other option, which is work your butt off at a 9-to-5 job doing hard manual labor. Use your local go, bin go. It's now so a thing. En so enjoy school while you can. Go. Why the garbage?
now go is exactly what it should be. Cool. So bash RC. I think I already have path being set up. Yeah, okay, so now go bin is go path should always be like the directory that you're working in. Yes, that's the directory you're, oh. you have to be working in. Okay. I'm sorry, Dad, not mention that. You, I mean, you probably <laughs> did, and I was just. <laughs> yes, uh, when you're when you're installing packages and stuff like that, and compiling your own pro programs, Go Path is the directory that you're going to be using to do all that in. That's okay. why you have to put it in your environmental variables, or else it cannot find your Go Path, and then it starts getting confused. Oh, it didn't even set the friggin' path. My bad. Bash RC. Go. Why the garbage? Go. Am I just moving too quick? Am I just being stupid? Clearly I am. Some, one um, of these variables is not being set. I typo ed the Basura. Did I write? Uh, oh my god, I'm an idiot. Go path was wrong. You write? <laughs> I wrote oh. GP instead of... Thank you, Internet. Always here for me. Export go bin. That should be right. User local go bin should be a thing. And then path should be exactly what it is. Go bin. Good. All right, I got my path. working. Why is go. path not doing what it's supposed to do? Do Are I you... reset it? I do reset Some... it. Yeah, sometimes after you save that, I've noticed Ubuntu Fuck does you. funny things. It's my own fault. I had my I had more lines of resetting my path variable. I probably just nerfed something, but <laughs> at least Go works. <laughs> yeah, I got Go working on my on my end. Uh, so which which page are you doing again, John? Uh, right now I was just running through the getting started page to make sure stuff would actually work. Okay. Make your go. Make your attack p source hello. CD that. Oh damn it! Oh, when you do get to it, you'll probably you'll want to make three directories after you get your go workspace going. You'll need a bin directory, a package directory, and a source directory. Source is where all your um, all your programs are going to be located, I believe. All the source code, right? I think all the executables, because when you compile them, they actually, um... They did it! I ran go build and it worked! <laughs> now I have a hello program! Oh my god! <laughs> 23 minutes in, in the video, and we finally ran a program! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm good on my end, too. <laughs> cool. Alright, now let's do... Master Bob, I hope you're getting into it. I hope it's as intense as you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Lit. Uh, oh, right. yeah, I remember what really, when I was, the first time I did Go, um, I tried it with the VS Code, and it likes making its own, like, directory structure and Go paths and everything. So it took me way longer to figure it out than you did. <laughs> I was stuck on it for like hours because I couldn't figure out why my go path wasn't working until I realized that uh, VS Code was messing up my path consistently. Oof. <laughs> TK it, Defender, it was... I'm glad you're here, man. It's yeah. Everyone seems to be a fan of Go, and I've like I've been out of the party. It took me so long to realize that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds like the environment variables just like start to trip you up for too long. They do, but once you really get it set up, you're like good. Because every program that you create and go will be in this directory structure. You don't have to create any separate directories or anything. Where's ran.int? Alright, let me go and get into VS Code here. Go ahead and open up my workspace. Oh, int n, based off the number. 
Are semicolons going to break it? Which one? Like, if I just have a semicolon in my code, does it die? I don't think so. Go build. Go build. No, it liked it. It was cool with it. My favorite number is repeatedly oh. one. Also, John, this yeah. is going to be a sneak peek, but there's only one loop structure in Go, but it does everything else that oh, all the other right. control structures do. Yeah. Which is really nice. Also, you're going to love the colon equals because it's basically like setting an, setting a variable and then naming it all in the same run. So setting the type and the name automatically. So it's really cool. So I'm looking forward to You're learning. That one. Not enough arguments to see. So I don't have time. What? To see different numbers, see the random number, see rant seed. Time is constant in the playground. So you need to use something else as a seed. Well I'm not using how do I how do I import time? I'm assuming um, FMT stands for do, format. Yeah. You have to import format, and then there's several different packages on Go. You just have to... Um, it looks at your Go root, oh, and then it wow. basically you have a bunch of packages in there. So whenever you want to add or import another package, underneath the import section, you put the name of the package that you want to import. This looks like good documentation. Like This looks like... Python quality documentation. <laughs> it is if you're good at reading Go docs. <laughs> because uh, Go docs are generated whenever you're doing code. Ah. Uh. How do I get the current Unix time? Now that you did Hello World, you're ready to make a Go botnet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Unix. You know, funny enough, Go actually has really good concurrency, so that might be possible, <laughs> although we wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> right, yeah. No need to make any of that stuff just yet. What do you mean just yet? <laughs> something you should go make. Time.unix. Cannot use time.unix, time.time, as type int 64. Oh, the type is wrong. So it returns a time object. How do I convert a time object to in 64? David, that <laughs> those environment variables go OS goose. Can you cast variables in go? Casting? Oh, like change, I want my time number to be instead just an integer. Oh, yeah, and Go is very... Um, think of Go like how you would state a variable in like C++ or C Sharp, something of that nature. You have to do the type first and then seconds. what it is. Uh, okay. Here, let me... Let me go and send you. Or if you want to do a variable all in one, what you could do is you could do colon equals and then that uh, works. just put an integer and it basically automatically uh, determines the type for you. Kyle, yeah, I see. <laughs> Kyle's making fun of me because you should never cast variables. <laughs> or at least you, you shouldn't always. There are times when you do, and times when yeah. you don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fun. That was fun. Now, Go can be a strongly typed language, but you can also use... My favorite part of Go is the colon equals because you can uh, initialize variables on the same line. So it, there's a lot of shortcuts there. So you don't have to do the type and then initialize it on the next line you can do colon equals which pretty much initializes it and sets the type on one line that's neato it's like suddenly becoming a dynamic language when it's not 
<laughs> doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Now, there are certain things that is better to do so that way. But What is an exported name? When reporting a package, you can refer only to its exported names. Any unexported names. Oh, oh, okay. It's like I do private. forget to mention, um, when you're doing variables and such, lowercase. Yeah. Because uppercase means they're globally exportable. Yeah, yeah I, I, that's what I'm reading now. That's okay. very neat. Yes, so when you're doing uppercase, that means you're going to export those variables to other um, other parts in your Go program, other files. I follow. See, it's not that hard once you get there. Yeah, I mean, I knew, like, okay, I'm going to be understanding a decent amount of syntax. Like, that's what this video is going to be. Go build. So because that's, like, essentially a private variable or an unexported one, it needs to be capitalized. Therefore, it's exported and public in what I would normally consider that. Wow! Learning! A function. Making things. It's weird, though, that it takes the type after the variable name. Crunchy is asking, why am I learning Go? I think it's a good thing to just learn as much as you can. Like, learn every single programming language that's ever out there in the world, ever. <laughs> True, it is, but, you know, there are certain strong points to Go. Yeah, and it sounds I like Go is awesome. I think concurrency is a lot of the big issues for a lot of programs, because for Python to run more than one instance at the same time is very difficult. <laughs> Not said it can't be done, but there are better languages for concurrency. Will Sublime Text, or are there any other like cool build systems or autocomplete stuff? Um, VS Code has some cool Go plugins. Oh, uh, I still need to play with VS Code. I haven't done that yet. And Go Lint, I think. Go Lint? Basically a linter for uh, yeah. Go languages. All right, I should write this function so I know what I'm doing. VS Code. Everyone says it. That's because, you know, Microsoft being how it is, is what it is. But they do have a good code editor. I will admit that much. They have a really good code editor. Oh, it needs a return type following it, too. What? Are those warnings? All right, people are telling me just friggin' jump to VS Code right now. <laughs> Use enter to watch standard output of your files and run an arbitrary command. ENTR? What is that? Wait, what are you trying to do? Uh, Skelling, Skelling Tor says, use ENTR to watch the standard output of your files and run an arbitrary command. What is that? Run arbitrary commands when files change. Whoa! Oh, also, John, probably another very useful thing that you can get is Go... I'm sure, are you using it right now? Go Docs. You can actually get that on the command line in... No, what is go docs? Go docs allows you to look up any um, anything that you need to from the command line. Go doc. Oh. So if I did go doc taunt wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> super neato. Finally something I know something about. <laughs> <laughs> I have made my claim on the stream. All right, so Skelling Tour, um, if I ENTR, you, yeah, and people are telling me to use VS Code. So many, so many obligations, so many things. Everyone has given up on Adam, Chad. Absolutely, Adam had that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, YouTube users tell me PyDoc does the exact same thing. Do I have PyDoc installed? Mm -hmm. Do you have PyDoc? I do have PyDoc installed. 
Yeah, we've given up on Adam because of that markdown remote code exploitation, remote code execution bug. <laughs> Use Vim. Oops. You're right, YouTube Oops. user. Oopsie, didn't mean to. You know, actually, funny enough, they're actually changing some things. We actually got them to the point they're changing um, Electron in the next uh, next rendition of it to change some settings automatically. So we actually got GitHub to go and change some stuff because of how many people were messaging them like for our stuff. <laughs> so our video actually did have somewhat of an impact. Yeah, dude, I have no doubt. Electron has uh, some, uh, some work to do, I think. It does. It was all that is the, basically they're, they're turning off node integration as um, by default, so they're turning it off. Kyle, I did not buy Sublime. I repeatedly get nagged by it. To... <laughs> My oh, roommate man. says, like, that's going to be one of our first business expenses. There's, like, something that we buy, and, like, why? <laughs> but, yeah, they don't even check. Yeah. Why even buy Sublime? <laughs> I think there was, for the longest time, there was some interesting tweak you could do in the hex values of the sublime binary that I cannot tell you. People are hyping up VS Code. Kyle's telling me VS Code's friggin' fantastic. Oh, John's gonna switch on stream. <laughs> yeah, dude, we're doing it for real. Does it take ages to start up like any other Visual Studio project? All right, guys. <gasps> Time for time for the memes. <laughs> John <laughs> promises go. Instead, we install Visual Studio Code. <laughs> Fails multiple times. Yep, yep. This is oh, why streams God. are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, okay. with all the with all the stuff that I have on my Windows right now, I need three or four monitors. That's going to be uh, next expense, maybe. <laughs> Go extension is recommended for this file type. Absolutely install it. I liked it. I liked that it recommended. Um, like this yeah. is what I want you to do. But do make sure that you have your Go everything in your Go set up first, or else it will screw up. <laughs> everything in my Go any... set up. Go returns command is not available. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what is Go Returns that I just told my computer to install for me? Uh, you'll be okay. I have to open the folder to use it properly. Can I do that? Open folder. Whoa! Yeah, that's fine. Install all. Sweet. Friggin' go. So, John, do you miss do you miss the printfs? Because that's one of the key syntax things that I do like about Go. Very reminiscent. I have a, terminal. I have a little terminal. Wow. It, I don't have printf. You mean from like C or something? Yeah, Why from C. It's very reminiscent of C. All this stuff is failing. Aspects. My God! Don't forget about ENTR. Yeah, um, scaling tour. Before I completely jump ship to VS Code, because that's what the people want. Um, how do I use ENTR? Like, what's the syntax? ENTR, and then the command that it's gonna happen, or? Does it give me any examples? Am I using vanilla Ubuntu? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's decked out with all the tools that I use and stuff that I like, but... So, okay. It needs the file names that it's monitoring as input. And then it needs the command, like, what it's going to do. So... 
I can ls all dot go pump that to go build or go go run build. It'll do the exact same things. Go run build will run will build and then run. Or Oh, I have to actually use ENTR, duh. Do you recommend setting up the LVM encryption when installing Ubuntu or a third party like Veracrypt? Whenever I have tried using LVM encryption when installing, for some reason my home directory, like, dies. <laughs> it just... It's a, it just breaks. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I would be more apt to try Veracrypt personally if it were me. Also, got to remember when when you're encrypting things because it constantly encrypts and decrypts. Just make sure that your hardware can keep up because if you have just what seventy two hundred RPM drives, they're not gonna. It's gonna be hard for them to keep up. It'll slow down your OS. So just keep that in mind. Am I running ENTR the right way? See so what are you doing? I'm running get me the file, all all the go files, pipe it into ENTR SH text C so it runs things, go build so it runs the current directory, and then try and run the program. I probably am mm. and I just haven't actually Where is it failing? <clears throat> oh, it's doing it! It's doing it Yep, oh, there you go. Nice. That is super cool. I didn't know about that Skelling Torn, Skelling Tur, etc. <laughs> that could be like a crazy good uh, blue team tool, too. Of like a poor man's, a poor man's file watcher. Thank you. Wow, I learned a lot just now. Um, question is next, how do I get VS Code to be running its magic? What I should go back to learn and go. What are you trying to do? Do, <laughs> Should, should, uh, VS Code, like, build and run and everything from within VS Code? Yeah, there's a terminal down there you can use to execute anything that you want. Okay, so, but it doesn't have, like, its own... Uh, good for thing for now. For it go, has, no, it, it has, doesn't. It, I guess it just has build, but no run. Then ENTR it is! <laughs> Please remove that what? Hank is... is worried about something. You can, but don't worry about it until you need debugging. Okay. Go run main dot go. Should I just be running hello dot go? Because I don't have a I don't have a main dot go. Oh, yeah, it'll just run it that way. That's cool. Ooh, there's a book called Black Hat Go. Why not try it? That is very, very cool. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. If he's referring to the semicolon, that's my bad. It's totally not necessary. I was just kind of learning to see if it would do it. What is the are there other neat advantages to running VS Code if I'm just still going to be compiling and running from the terminal? Uh, More so see. asking for people in the chat that are like, Use VS Code! Well, it has Git source control, but I mean, if you use Git like, on CLI, I guess it doesn't make that much of a difference. Right. It's, it's easier to push stuff All right. um, I think its strength lies in its ability to be debug and uh, its extensions thirteen it does it first chapters are available there's no reason why you can't run ENTR and VS code Dojan 
you're a smart cookie. You're a smart <laughs> dude. You're smarter <laughs> than me. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, John. <laughs> no, 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 uh, absolutely. So LS Go and then ENTR SH Taxi. That's such a neat thing. Go build and then just run. Hello. And then it does it just like that. Sweet. Has Emmet for simple code completion? It should auto complete? What? I don't I don't see it auto completed just yet. Do I need to install more stuff? Probably. <laughs> Okay, we're good. I had a little hiccup, but that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're still with us, Sinister. Malware written in Go is starting to become a thing. I hope not. Please use the language right. Dude, absolutely. <laughs> Every programming language is obviously a weapon. Well, of course, but it depends on how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know all these wonderful people on here will use it right. Right, guys? Oh, Go has like this full explanation as to why they use the variable type after the name. Which one? What are you looking at? Oh, yeah, it, it does. Look up Emmett in my free time. John, this is not your free time. Dude, my streams are my free time, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> It's just everyone's free time they spend with me as well. <laughs> we need we need to rename the uh, stream again. We've John still been goes, learning Go. <laughs> John goes on 50 million tangents before learning Go. Yeah, yeah. John starts a new page in the tour of Go every five minutes. Uh, this is why I love streams. <laughs> oh, that's neat. You can just shorten those. That's cool. Oh yeah, like I said, the um, the colon equals will be your best friend. Let's try and get random numbers coming in to be added. So import math. Can I just import rand? Does it know to do that? Nope. It needs to, it needs to use math rand. Um, you might want to import math first and then access rand from there. Can I can I just import math rand and I get strictly that one, right? Here, um, before I want time again. Before you before you do that, you can actually um, your variable or your import names. You can actually import them as a, a different name. So if you oh, put what? the you if you put the name afterwards, either before or after, it should let you use that as the um, import name, if I remember properly. Use what as the import name? I think you can, oh yeah, if you put the, uh, if you put a custom name before what you import, it'll let you use that name. So. So I can just use anything dot time. Well, in front of format, put like, AS or something, and then put a space, and then you can, anywhere down there you can put AS dot and get everything from format. Okay. So you can rename your imports. Basically. Colon equals rand int n 10, and then y. And let's use int x y. Y is Unix x whining. You mean you have oh, to oh. get you have to get to one of the four loops during the stream, John. They're really oh, cool yeah. to use. Because there's only one loop, really. And then it can do multiple you can run it as a while loop. Uh, you can do pretty much any of the other syntax. 
using just the for loop. Yeah, all right. I think we're almost there. The swap function returns to strings. Okay, so string is a type. Named return values. I needed to yawn. It's getting sleepy. <laughs> I, I was like, I can't hear anything. Like, right. I just like went away and mic and muted my microphone. He's like, I'm, oh, 11.30. Bedtime pretty soon. Those returns values may be named. Oh. I wonder if people use that a lot. <laughs> Someone's telling me to go to bed. That's very clever. Thank you. How do I pronounce... Is your, should I say your name as B? Or is that a symbol? In Go, you should name stuff camel case and not snake case. So with those, Yes. Okay. Just like you would in uh, JavaScript. Okay. So. I am going to need a mental shift to do that because I, <laughs> I'm a Python guy and all I do is snake case. Yeah, the uh, underscore. Yeah, I get you. Var will allow me to declare things. Yes. But typically, you don't. You can. I think you can use var, and I think you can use const as well. Yes. But normally, you're going to be using the colon equals because you can declare and initialize the variable in the same line. There will only be certain instances where you'll want to do the other, really. Okay. Of our declaration, I'm going to include initializers. If an initializer is present. I guess I should start to do some of those things rather than just click through them. Time. I know I'm not using you. Add numbers X and Y. You're not real anymore. We want var i bool equals. I am familiar with the tech lead. I'm very jealous that he has such a huge following. Man, all these all these YouTube channels popping up. <laughs> For C Python, I'm confused. How does that happen? Oh, they're they're associative. More structure in the streams would probably help, so you don't get waysided by random tests like install that new shiny editor. <laughs> You have a point, YouTube user. Yeah, totally <laughs> correct. But, you know, that's kind of the point of these streams. They're messy. Yeah. <laughs> They're just there. True, hello. Okay, that's very cool. Rodrigo, really? Go compiler sounds awesome. It sounds super smart and super cool. It is. It's it's very formatted, so it'll it'll tell you how to compile it like the least I'm trying to figure out how to word this. With the most optimized way. Yeah, like. pretty much. Yeah. Go Go is focused on optimization, so the compiler will kind of force you to do things to maintain optimized stuff. I don't know how else to say it, but that's kind of what I've learned from my little bit of time using Go. <laughs> Kyle Ross, yeah. Um, when I got started with Live Overflow, or at least he was willing to give me that shout out, I was at 10,000 when that happened. Uh, he brought me up to like 17,000, 18,000 with like that video alone. And that's been slowly growing since then. Yeah, the optimization Hank, yeah, of binary I think, size. 
YouTube user, but uh, it's an it's an executable. So Hank, I mean, honestly, run faster. I would like to move on to Go rather than Python because I think there's much more promise and it's it's more powerful. Personally, I think I don't know. Yeah, Kyle Ross, I would love to be a hundred k. Give it time. I do think one. I, I do think one good thing out of Go that you know we could create is I think it'll be good at like brute forcing because it's very um it's very focused on concurrency. So running multiple sessions at once is like no problem for Go. Oh, for real. Yes. So it'll make brute forcing a lot easier. Dang. And faster. I have not tried the NIM language. I, I suppose I don't know what that is. <laughs> Crunchy yeah. throwing shade at the Go language. <laughs> Just because you can't install it doesn't mean Go is bad. <laughs> right? Everybody struggles with the Go install. <laughs> it sounds like it. Like it's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be easy, but these environment variables are somehow like oh it should just be this and then it, what why is it not that yeah, i don't I, th I think go has access to threads or at least a um like a derivative of that so like it, it can use multiple threads to do processes there's probably different terminology for it but Python syntax statically typed? Ew. <laughs> the whole point of Python is for it not to be a statically typed language. <laughs> Whoa. It compiles to C and Z++, though. YouTube users are going to get angry at me if I keep looking at different shiny things. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I only gave it like five seconds. Oh, so you can cast. The expression type, based on that, will go ahead and set it. Go assignment between items or different types requires an explicit conversion. Try being float 64. Huh. Yep. Some of those I'm just like, okay, I bl I'll, I'll press the I believe button. I don't think I need to write it out. I just kind of want to see it. Yeah, Go is definitely a cool language to really, honestly. What I, I would... want to do to like test myself and like actually learn it and make good things with it is to start to re rebuild a lot of command line utilities. Like, sure, let's try and write the ls command in Go, or let's write grep in Go, or let's write, you know, et, et cetera, et cetera. So that way I know this is a function that I can actually use with it and make it useful. I wonder I wonder if that would be able to be used in Windows as well, because Go is cross-platform. Oh, that's a good point, yeah, if the modules will play just as nicely. So that way I don't have to worry about, like, having to set all my aliases. <laughs> You just you know, define your own command line suite. That's all. Yeah, because that, that's a thing in Windows <laughs> as well as Linux, but you use it more in Windows because it doesn't doesn't like LS. <laughs> it oh, likes Dir. For it. At least changing directories is the same. <laughs> Keyword for constant is const. That's easy enough. Yep. A lot constant. of this... You're gonna you're gonna find a lot of similarities with many of the languages that you've probably already seen. Uh, All right, let's do the for loop. Here we go. <laughs> Draken does not approve of the go of learning go. Everyone should learn go. <laughs> I want to give it a chance. I want to keep up with the cool kids. Next, I'm gonna learn. Angular. <laughs> <laughs> Angular. <laughs> oh. Well, you already know some Laravel, don't you, John? Uh, yes, but I do not consider Laravel and, and Angular anywhere near close to each other.
Yeah, oh, Rust, okay. YouTube user, you're exactly right. YouTube user, do you listen to Coda Radio, uh, the podcast by Jupiter Broadcasting? Rodrigo, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's not Drake worrying about like, the platform. Drake is, is like, cool. the damn gopher still haunts my dreams. <laughs> he does show up everywhere. The nerds are sitting with the go. Edward Alexander. Too many Lara casts. Yeah, YouTube user, I, I thought of it just because of um, uh, the podcast is called Coder Radio. Um, by Jupiter Broadcasting. They've been hyping up Rust a little bit because of also the contrived opinions of it and hate between people love it or hate it. Or it's, but it's a very hipster language right now. Dev Can Dungeon, you thank a, you, man. Could you give me a rundown on Rust? Because I'm not quite 100% certain. I could not give you a rundown on Rust, but Google oh, can. Google <laughs> Shiny distractions <laughs> keeping me away from learning Go. <laughs> no, you can you can do that on your own. I'll go back to Go. Yeah, I'm doing it on my own. I want to learn this for loop syntax, which looks just like any other regular for loop syntax. Except that it does multiple different types. So you can do a while loop. You can also do, uh, I believe, Rust is C++ but better. Or tries to be better. <laughs> yeah, YouTube user, you're the one that was throwing shade. <laughs> uh, VN, VNVE and PIP. You know, I, ever since I've had to install Pwn Tools with PIP, I've always hated PIP because it always was a pain getting Pwn Tools to work. So now. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Crunchy saw it. I put on the hood, so now I'm now I'm elite hacker. <laughs> this is my uh, glitch mob sweatshirt. I went to go see the glitch mob. And they were friggin' fantastic. I don't know how oh. many of you are EDM listeners, but... Uh, John, where's, uh, where's my sticker? Where's your sticker? <laughs> yes, where's my sticker? Did you give me a sticker? I don't know. Did you give me a sticker? That's the real question. <laughs> are you, you can buy a sticker from my channel. Three dollars. It only helps me... It only gives me a one dollar profit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to be honest for the people. <laughs> I... I'm a very transparent guy. I can Lightning Tower, you. thank you. Yeah, B-Sides Long Island was fantastic. Uh, last weekend I was in Tampa, Florida for B-Sides Tampa. Um, I got second place there. It was a hack the box game. It was kind of cool. I have footage from it, so I'd be happy to show that to you if you guys would like. But Oh, you should. Definitely go for it. I also hear about F-Sharp. People say that it's actually cool, I thought. I gotta go to B-Sides Las Vegas. I wanna go there for Pros vs. Joes or sometimes, or some really cool stuff. Four uses curly braces. The O, oh, okay, oh. Now you see the, the so, plus the four loops. So that that's what can also make it like a while loop. Yep. That's pretty neato. And the the simplicity with the loops I'm a, I love about Go because you can loop multiple variables in one for loop, right? And you can set different increments on them. Whoa. So it shortens your syntax quite a bit. So are you impressed? 
Crunchy's telling me to learn Scratch. Yes. Jeez, so many languages we have to learn. I know. <laughs> Come I on, should, guys. I get a stream too can't often, we, but... Can't we at least get good at one language before you guys keep throwing us into 50 more? Let me. Well, I mean, if people like to see that stuff, I'll absolutely do it. Um, well, duh. That's a good list, though. Scratch, Elixir, Lua. Rust. Rust. Sharp. Swift. I'd be willing. I'd be willing to hurt myself with the Swift language. <laughs> <laughs> Do some iOS stuff. Lua is original gangster hacker. I could do Lisp, and then I'd be real. Rust. I'm writing these down in my in my boards. Elixir. Swift. <laughs> I should jump into Swift. No JavaScript. <laughs> I got you. Come on. John said it himself. JavaScript's actually a useful language. I mean, it's growing, <laughs> man. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It is. Well, now that they have Node, you, you pretty much don't even really need PHP for backend anymore. Not, not really. Sorry for anyone out there who uses PHP. But... It's so cool. <laughs> Kotlin, David, good call. That's also like the one that's climbing up there. Like that's also being used like everywhere. TypeScript. PHP. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You PHP, not a fan. Just I'm gonna learn WebAssembly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if statements look like any other if statement. Oh, of course. Go. I would agree. No, Go is better than Node. But if you want to create a whole web application in uh, JavaScript, then Node is your best bet. We'll be done learning Go in one sitting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I've got 16 more minutes. <laughs> So after this, John will be a Go master, right? Everyone can go uh, ahead and type that in chat. If you can like set a variable through an if statement, you can like... Yes, you can initialize one through an if statement. That's weird, man. Compile... It is, but... <laughs> master Bob says, compile Docker into WebAssembly, run containers running Go microservices in your browser. Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> compile everything into WebAssembly. And then compile WebAssembly into just raw op codes. Node plus NPM is enough to bring down a data center. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hitting True. the wrong button. Else statements work the exact same way they should. Exercise loops and functions. Switch statement also looks exactly like every other, except they don't have a break statement. Uh, break is provided automatically in Go. That's yeah, so nice, they, man. They were really yeah, looking out for us. I think there's um there's something else that allows you to put something off until the absolute end. I forgot what it's called. Uh, someone in chat could probably help me out with that. But it, it allows... Oh, defer. That's what it is. Defer? Yes, defer puts all processes off until you exit. So it's like... I'm trying to remember. Oh, here it is. A defer statement defers the execution of a function until the surrounding function returns. What? Whoa. What what use case would that have? And that's just me being like a narrow-minded, I only know how to program the way I know how to program, but... Like, let's say you were to do 
a bunch of processes before something were to close. Like an ASIC function. Right? You can, yeah. Basically, you can do a close function within that, but defer it until every other process has gone through. Okay. Cool. Super cool. Closing a file, multi-threaded applications. Yeah. Wow. Open a file, defer the yeah, defer the closing of the file. So basically, the file will automatically be closed, and you don't have to close it yourself. What does the format option or the format module have for functions? Let's check out the Go doc. There's a lot. Just taking arguments, printf is a thing. I'm yawning. Sprintf. How do I read in input? Can format do that? YouTube user is yawning. <laughs> In this stream, everyone falls asleep. <laughs> Dude, yawns are contagious. We have a YouTube slumber party together. That'd be slightly unnerving. <laughs> slightly. You were very you were being very, very generous. I was being very generous. That would be extremely unnerving. It's almost 6 a.m. It's too late to fall asleep. <laughs> Buffio, Buffio is the input. Far input string format scan line. Oh, scan line is a thing. <laughs> John Hammond Super Bowl. I appreciate that. Write a simple TCP proxy. That's a good idea. Probably you yeah. want to use Scanner. Is Buff.io what people normally use, or do they just use Scanline within Format? Scanline looks convenient because I already have Format imported. That might be more convenient. Write a sim... Yeah, a proxy would be really cool to write and go. TCP and UDP proxy. Although I'm not sure how you do the UDP portion, but... Does it return? Oh, it uses, like, pass-by-reference stuff. Uh-oh. It's getting to spooky stuff. Scanline reads until a space character, though. What? Should scanline be what I use? I don't know. What, do you have percent %s down there? Uh, I'm using printf to get the string. Yeah, the string. Would that... Would the percent %f be what the problem is, or would it be the scan line? Just go for it. Just try it. <laughs> try everything. Default scanner splits on whitespace, like but you this. can use different scanners or build your own that defines when to split. <laughs> Lightning Tower, you were struggling with that, dude. You kept calling it fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Dojan, that's the exact reaction that I had. Why is it called scanline if it counts space characters? Let's get Buffio. Let's check out Buffio. Go greater, go better than Java. Change my mind. <laughs> Buffio. A reader is a thing. Oh 
OS dot standard input. Yeah, there is an OS function or package in there. Yeah. So. Let's see, OS dot Karen, hello, welcome. I believe you can capture standard input from OS. It looks like you need it to be imported if you're doing anything with Buff.io. Because that's how you define the new scanner object is using that file handler. Standard in. Go is a fun language. I actually need to go in and like legitimately like learn it. Because the more I look at it, it just has so many good qualities to it. Can you define an unused variable with an underscore? Yes. Neat. I think. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, you can. Although, why is it showing up red? Undefined. Doesn't have read string. Why not? New scanner. That's a thing. Uh, that's the error. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Dev Dungeon. You totally caught that I needed the colon there. Oh, yeah, you need to define it. <laughs> uh, that's so cool. The colon equals is probably my favorite part of Go. Yeah, it's so cool. It's like he completely that... ignores the stupid, annoying static language overhead, but still keeps all the static language power. Yep, and you can use static... Or you can use the static language and on top of that, which makes... makes things really awesome. Okay, now it's still taking... space and characters, also. though. Not... Dev Dungeon, am I just misunderstanding like should my read string really cut on a new line character john you need to upgrade your discords that way your screen share is not all blurry <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Passing a character? Oh, it really cares about the whole. I mean, that makes quote, sense. Double quote things? It does. That makes sense. It is C like. It does, yeah, it does keep many. Type doesn't match. Yes, you do. You literally just had this functionality. How did it go away? Oh, read string. Okay. What the what? <laughs> Which one are you looking into, John? I'll see if I can find it in GoDog. New reader, not new scanner. What is the difference between the two? Scanner is supposed to tokenize, like in, in purpose. Ralk, uh, I'm just, or Reich, however I say your name, sorry, I couldn't see there. Uh, the purpose of me learning Go is just to learn and to be better. What's what's the difference between new reader and new scanner? Is it just literally tokenizing? It might just be a different object altogether. I mean, it absolutely is a, a, new, a different object altogether, but... Wow! Lots of things! <laughs> David's like, I don't friggin' know. <laughs> Alright, we only got four minutes left to save the world. What do you guys want to... What should I cover? You can stack defers. Congratulations, I finished the lesson. What are other Go modules? Or Go packages? There's absolutely tons. 
Uh, currently, right now, we're creating a bot that has a whole bunch of packages created uh, disc for Discord. So. Oh wow. There's like There's... everything you would already see in Python, like everything that's actually worthwhile to do. Go and... has. And it is very easy to create your own packages as well. In in your Go See structure, that? there's a uh, there's a directory that you can create called PKG. I saw, directory, yeah. You put your packages in there. You can access them by importing them. Go has more. Go literally has more. Julian, you're right. So, like... Also, um, it works really well with importing packages from Git as well because you can just put the github slash directory structure and it just figures it out and just knows what and to it do. does it yes That's so cool well this was simply wetting my feet in a very very cool language that i absolutely want to learn a lot more about and hopefully replace ultimately python. replace python for me yeah because that's what i would <laughs> that's what i would reach for but this just Dude, seems like I, a... can, I can just hear all the python devs sighing <laughs> <laughs> like no you've left us john we've lost a good soldier i haven't yet i haven't by any means but this just looks like a powerhouse man sweet well with two minutes to midnight, I think it's a fine time to wrap it up so I can get some sleep. Because I'm yeah, yawning. Same here. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Yep. Um, hopefully, we'll do more of this very, very soon. Uh, for those of you is, yeah. that might be wondering or watching, um, I'm trying to record some things now um, that are teaching you how to use docker and set up a small enough container that you can put a capture the flag challenge in there or like a service or program that has a vulnerability so yeah it's a like developing ctf challenges uh playlist and, and series i have about two videos recorded so far it's moving slow very slow and slower than i want it to but hopefully that will be coming out soon i wanted to stream tonight because i have been away from this stuff for a little bit too long yesterday i was just sandbagging so there's stuff coming. I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. So. Thanks for watching, all. See you.